Welcome back to the Oak Mountain ACOTS guys, it's Jason here. Well, we're going to do something a little bit different in today's video. We've been moving a lot of firewood uh, to our customers here this fall. We're getting a little bit of cash flow and uh, we thought that we would order another tool for the wood lot. Stick around. All right, we've had our eye on one of these uh, pole saws for quite some time now. And uh, we didn't pull the trigger earlier on. I couldn't decide if I wanted to go with a steel model, if I wanted to get a Husqvarna professional pole saw. There's all kinds of different battery powered manufacturers out there. And I watched a lot of review videos. And uh, ultimately, I decided to buy the DeWalt pole saw because I already have a whole suite of battery powered DeWalt tools and I wanted to stay with the same chargers and the same battery so I had backup. So that was the major driver for the decision here for us in Oak Mountain. So uh, this isn't a review video, I'm not sponsored by DeWalt, uh, but I do want to go through this really quickly and show you what I've picked up and then we're gonna head to the woods and try it out. So this is uh, a 20 volt brushless unit and uh, the pole saw is an eight inch saw blade and it's got the tool built right into the uh, to the saw protector so that you can tighten your chain if need be out in the woods. It has its own oil for the bar here. Some of them are oilless and I don't think that's good for the chain and the bar. So another reason why I purchased this was it did have the oiling feature for the chain. This is a nice piece of metal um, that will basically act as a stop when you bite into a branch and hold that saw right into the limb or the branch. So that was another feature that I liked. It's not made out of plastic, it's made out of metal. Yeah, so I'm really excited to get this out into the woods and try it out. So it came with this uh, hedge trimmer as well. It's a 22 inch hedge trimmer. We're not gonna trial that today, but uh, the hedge trimmer has a tilt feature on it. So you can set that however you like and uh, we're interested to try it. We think it's gonna be a good addition, but uh, that won't be the focus of today's video. There's an extension pole so that you can get lots of reach. And of course the power head here with a shoulder harness and uh, there's a dead man switch on that. So safety features built right in. And it did come with another charger, which I have two or three of these now, uh, and a four amp 20 volt battery. So I've thrown an extra battery on the back of the Kubota RTV. Uh, from one of my other power tools and we're going to take the pole saw out the power head and we're going to see if we can start to get some of these branches out of the way that have been running into the backhoe so i hadn't really thought about this guys but uh, the fact that you can put multiple heads on that uh, on that power system means that it'll break apart and that means that you can load it onto your machine easily right so I don't have to build some sort of a carrying device for something that's 10 or 12 feet long on the side of the side by side. I can just take these. These are no longer than four feet and slip them right on the back. So that's an added bonus for sure with this DeWalt saw. I don't know if I'll need it, but I will take the extension. And of course the battery, I might as well put right on the power head while we're here. All right, let's head to the woods. Okay guys, so we spend a lot of time maintaining our road network here on our 500 acres. And uh, I guess that's part of doing microforestry is you have to be able to get the little equipment in around the wood that you want to harvest. If you were working with a skidder, you would just probably drive down through the trees and mow them over and uh, pull out the wood that you wanted to pull out and you'd leave a mess behind for sure. So. You know, part of, the, part of the issues with doing microforestry is that you have to have a network of roads, in my opinion. Uh, so to do that and to do it well, you've got to have a backhoe around or an excavator or something like that. And these machines are big, right? So this is one of the problems. The little Kubota B2601 tractor and the Craneman hydraulic timber trailer, that will slip right underneath uh, branches like this and you don't even know they're there. But when you're bringing the backhoe back in, to do maintenance work on the roads, these branches become a problem. Now, I could cut those trees and get rid of those branches, but every time you open up the road, you're just adding more sunlight to the roads and uh, more trees and brush are going to grow, right? So it's a trade-off for us. And what I thought I would do with this, uh, with this pruning saw 
is just reach up there and take a couple of branches and still allow that canopy to grow in over top so that uh, we keep the sunlight out and uh, that keeps the brush at a minimum because you have to keep the brush maintained. Uh, Mother Nature is very good at filling in all of these spaces that doesn't have anything growing. So we're just going to pull ahead with the backhoe. You can have a look at uh, what we're talking about here. You know, it takes a lot of money to maintain machines like this and keep them in good shape. Last winter, we just put nice LED lights on. We've got mirrors on the side of that machine. You don't want to drag that through brush. So we're going to pull ahead, show you where that's hitting on the backhoe, and then we're going to get that pole saw going. So we've got to put some oil into this uh, saw head to keep the chain lubricated. That'll just take a second. So that's nice. The cover does have a little keeper on it, just like the chainsaw. And we're just going to use our regular bar oil that we use on the Husqvarna. Made a mess already. Won't be the last time, I'm sure. All right, I don't think I'm gonna put the extension on at this point. Now these are supposed to be pretty slick. You just uh, line up the arrows on the top. And screw it together. Take the guard off. And we should be ready to rock and roll. First thing I notice is that uh, there is quite a bit of weight out on that power head, so uh, we'll see how we make out. It's not something that uh, I would want to lug through the woods all day, but we'll just balance it out and we'll go start cutting some branches. Okay, I noticed a little change in sound and it felt like things were tightening up and I can move that by hand but not that well. So there I had, uh, had a piece of softwood off of that fir tree caught between the bar and the chain and the side case so I guess we'll have to watch out for that. All I did was loosen off the, the bolts here that you would use to tighten the chain. Everything freed up. But that was no big deal. Probably just learning curve. Okay, everything seems to be moving again there, no problem. Karen asked me if I was gonna wear safety glasses and I said I probably don't need them, but I think I need to wear my cotton hat for this. There was enough sawdust and debris falling down off of those trees that uh, I can see that we need to have it on. Okay, let's try again. Okay, give you guys some first impressions. I like that, uh, that little pole saw. 
Uh, I thought that the harness was going to be a great addition, but I think you saw early on that uh, if I wanted to reach up, it was actually a hindrance, not a help. So we're gonna take that off. It might be good for the hedge trimmer, especially if you're holding it down and you're trying to cut some branches or some tall grass or something like that away from trails. But uh, I don't think this is something that I'm gonna be using for the pole saw. Now, the other thing that I talked about at the start of this was that I was concerned about uh, about the weight of that and how much torque, I guess, it was putting on my arm out here. I hurt this arm a couple of years ago and it's never healed quite right and it's not as strong as it used to be. And as soon as I held that out, I could feel that it was, it was uh, hurting my arm in here again. But what I've learned very quickly is that I just need to hold it up straight. And that puts all of the weight um, right on that plane and I can very easily reach up and get the limbs and if I want to extend all the way up, I'm probably getting up there a good 12 to 14 feet, right? So I think that's going to do everything that we need it to do. Now the other thing that I was concerned about was how much energy it was going to take to run this and how long I could actually work it. We have four kilometers of woods roads here at least, and uh, there's a lot of brush to knock out of it and to maintain, but uh, again, we're back here in the shade because we haven't opened up these roads very much and uh, it is September the weather is cooling down but it's just a nice little workout so uh, I really like it I think it's going to be a great addition to the woodlot here Okay hey guys, this is the way to carry this. Basically just find the balancing point on that and walk right along with it. I wouldn't use the harness if I were you guys. Uh, I think it's a hindrance, like I said. So we've run down through here. We've probably done 200 meters of trail. It takes a couple minutes to throw your brush out of the way after the fact, but uh, if we weren't shooting videos and Karen and I came out, this would be a good way to put in an hour in the evening a little exercise, enjoy the woodlot, help the trails, uh, would be a good little pastime every once in a while to come out and keep doing a little bit of maintenance like this. I could run the pole saw, Karen could clean up a little brush, and uh, it would be a good thing. So this is what the head looks like after, uh, after doing some cutting. You can see that it's going to build up with some fiber, with some uh, sawdust and chips and some leaves, but that's to be expected. No different than if you're running your chainsaw in the woods. Take a look right down in here. You can see that you're going to get a little bit of build up in here around the case to the chain and the chain and the bar itself. Probably would be a good idea to take uh, this off periodically and clean that up. Especially this isn't something that's going to get used every day. So why not take a few minutes when you take it back home and uh, clean it up and wipe it down before you hang it on the wall. That would probably just be a good thing to do. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, it came with a four amp hour, 20 volt battery. And that battery can be used on all the different tools. It's a lithium ion battery. And uh, I don't know, we did 200 meters of trail, cut quite a bit of brush out of the way. And I don't know what we've got for battery life left. You can't really check it, but uh, seems to be going strong and we've got a spare one on the side by side anyway and if you're in for a big job we might have a solution to keep batteries charged in the woods anyway we'll have to stick around in future videos to find out if that solution is going to work or not okay guys i think that's uh that's a good review of this little dewalt pole saw um, oak mountain gives this uh two thumbs up at this point seems like it's going to be a nice uh, addition to our tool arsenal here on the mountain and uh, I think we'll take it back and clean it up and uh, start thinking about our next job here. We'll see you in the next one.